It's an absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage Viva founder and director, Juliet Galatly. Hi, everybody. You're having a good time? <laughs> well, it's Viva's 25th anniversary. So what better way to celebrate than with a hard-won victory for the animals? If you haven't already heard, where have you been? Following Viva's third investigation, Tesco have dropped Hogwood Farm. And Red Tractor have suspended them. The owner of Hogwood Pig Farm went on the BBC last week saying he'd find another supplier. In the meantime, he didn't know that Viva was on to their major supplier, Cranswick Foods. Now they're one of the UK's leading food producers. They own a third of the UK pig market. They have an annual revenue of 1.5 billion pounds. Following Viva um, contacting them, they announced they'll immediately stop receiving all deliveries from Hogwood Pig Farm following our investigation. This is a huge victory. Don't underestimate the ripples that this has sent through the industry. Cranswick said in an official statement on their website, having seen the indefensible footage by Viva, who've taken the decision to permanently cease accepting any future deliveries from Hogwood Farm. So let me tell you a story about Hogwood. Hogwood represents so much of what is wrong about farming and eating animals. It is disgusting, it's dirty, it's a depressing industrial unit that incarcerates bright, beautiful pigs, 15,000 of them, making Hogwood a so-called mega farm, typical, very sadly, of British farming. Viva's campaign has touched millions of people's hearts and that's why it's the right time to use the farm to shine a spotlight on the state of farming to expose not only what's accepted but what's actually encouraged as the norm by the establishment. I was contacted two years ago by an ex-employee of Hogwood. He'd seen some footage that were taken as part of another campaign face-off where I was inside a pig farm in Norfolk. And he said, it's nowhere near as bad as the place where I worked. So I asked an investigator to find out if it was true. He had many years of experience, and yet he was really shaken by what he'd witnessed. Dead pigs, their bloated bodies dumped outside the sheds before he'd even gone in. A baby without feet left to struggle. Females looking out from the so-called rape racks with utter despondency in their eyes. I decided to investigate myself and went along with three colleagues. We set off on a warm, dry June evening. I will never forget it. We entered a farm, which was a huge industrial complex, and our hearts sank. I've investigated many farms and have developed coping mechanisms but this skank hole was particularly large and it was just awful. I remember the first step, uh, I remember the first shed I stepped into was colossal. It had pigs more tightly packed in it than I've ever seen. There was no gangways, there were just hundreds and hundreds of pigs. And I tried to step through them carefully, but being pigs, they're utterly bright and utterly bored, and so they swarmed towards me and started nibbling the covering of my shoes that I wore to stop the spread of disease. I looked around, and there were hundreds of animals, about three months old, all wide awake at this early hour. This place never switches off its lights, and there is no way, no way any animal could ever sleep properly because of the overcrowding. There simply was not the space. Imagine being inside a shed yourself, so crammed with other people, that the only rest you can get 
is that brief, deep slumber from sheer exhaustion, and then uh, you're jolted awake again. And I saw it. I was watching animals in the distance as they were jolted out of sleep by another pig clambering on top of them. Contrast this to the beautiful, noble sow, Hope Apple Blossom, who Viva and Dean Farm Sanctuary rescued, along with her six babies, who sleep for hours in deep straw, peaceful and content, in their cosy outdoor bedroom, which was set in the idyllic rolling Welsh countryside. When I walk amongst hundreds of animals crammed together, those faces looking at me in anticipation, I see the bubbling energy of youth, but witness that enthusiasm and brightness constantly slap down. I feel their hope, that nebulous sense of life, a life they're meant to live, but which never materializes. What Hogwood elicit elicited in me was a deep, acidic feeling deep in my soul that the human race is committing war crimes every day, in this case, a war against animals. I walked into another vast warehouse, a tiny area was cordoned off from hundreds of other pigs, and I looked down and there were two pig skulls and a jaw that had been hacked off and a lower leg all left to rot in what looked like years worth of filth. I glanced to my left and there was a dead, black and bloated body of a pig being pushed and prodded by cellmates. All of them, hundreds of them, just covered in excreta. No wonder disease is rife on factory farms. No wonder antibiotics are so overused on these animals that superbugs are being created inside their abused, sick bodies. Antibiotic resistant bacteria in the flesh that people consume. Half of all antibiotics in the UK, half, are used on farmed animals, not people, and 60% of those are sold to the pig trade. One of the most surreal experiences I had was in another shed, this time not crowded at all, in fact it was quite the opposite. It was an old building festooned in cobwebs, a ghostly, oppressive place where it appeared ill animals who had been abandoned to die. One sow was lying on the floor, shaking. I went to her and knelt and whispered soft words. I rubbed her tummy and I simply wanted to weep, but just one solitary tear escaped. Just days earlier, I'd been with Hope's piglets Jack Wiglinson and Lily Bubbles were flopping on my lap, demanding their bellies be tickled. And here was a sow, neglected, abused and dying, hearing the only kind words that she would ever have had said to her in her life. And so we moved on to more modern industrial units, separated into concrete cells with slatted wooden gangways. Each was crammed with piglets, where there was a cynical addition of a chain with a plastic sheathing for biting. And this is how cynical this industry is, because this is how they get round the laws. That is enrichment for pigs. Of course, its novelty value had long gone. There was no straw, no bedding, just harsh, soiled floors, concrete walls, and a life filled with utter boredom, frustration, no outlet for active, intelligent, inquisitive minds. I opened the next door to the next cell block and to my horror lay an ill pig slumped against the wall, actually in the gangway. A little piglet with some neurological disease was walking oddly sideways and she started to nip at my camera, at last something for her to play with. Four other sick animals had clearly been abandoned in the gangway a previous visit had revealed the atrocity of dead bodies just pulled outside of it into an inglorious heap just left to rot. A colleague then called me over to the farrowing unit. This sow's giving birth. So there I was witnessing this mother give birth to her babies. Sometimes I look back at the photo of her expression, the hopelessness of a mother. Maybe it was her fourth pregnancy, maybe her fifth. 
looking into the camera as her babies were born onto a cold, unforgiving concrete floor. One of the babies was struggling, shivering, ill. Another tiny little thing, the runt of the litter, struggling to find her teats. I didn't know what to do because part of me said he'd be better off dead and part of me wanted to comfort him. And so I did move him to her teat. On leaving Hogwood, we looked inside a massive wheelbarrow. It was piled high with rotting piglets in a sea of writhing maggots. It was the end of the investigation and seemed to embody everything we'd just experienced. As you know, we reported the farm to Tesco and of course to all authorities, obviously including the government. Viva held a day of action with you, our supporters, outside their local Tesco's all on the same day. We held vigils outside Hogwood Pig Farm, which Warwickshire Animal Save took on and continued, and thank you so much to everybody involved with them. We gathered tens and tens of thousands of signatures. We presented them to the government. Tesco's response? We are satisfied with the conditions and that the animals are treated well. The following year, we investigated again. This time, security had been substantially increased. The place was like Fort Knox. In fact, I had to call off the investigation when we found a pig that had been dumped in the very same gangway that we had been faithfully promised would never be used like that again, was being cannibalized alive by other pigs, her entire body trembling. We called the RSPCA, we called local vets. Two hours later, a vet did turn up. But meanwhile, so had the owner, and he'd had half an hour to do whatever, probably move the pig, which the vet never proclaimed to even see. And this is what you're up against. People who will lie so easily. On the protest that we did outside of the farm, the National Pig Association were there representing this skank hole, not afraid of just saying any untruth. So for example, they would say things like, we planted the dead piglets in the wheelbarrow, like we took those rotting pigs in for them to be filmed. I actually asked for the CCTV footage to prove this because he actually said it to media. And of course, the CCTV footage never appeared. Anyway, still Tesco dug their heels in. We held another day of action. Support was incredible. It was building the momentum all the time. We had a video van and showed the footage outside Tesco's premier stores. We held street actions. We filmed in 3D. We got people to actually immerse themselves in what it was like to be inside Hogwood Pig Farm. Tesco's still wouldn't budge. They said standards were still being met. So let's jump to this year, 2019. You may remember the start of the year. The industry worked with Channel 4's Dispatches documentary program. They made a program called The Truth About Vegans. Quite a claim to make, eh? It was some failed, rather pathetic attempt to marginalize veganism through our Hogwood investigation as being extreme as if actually showing that you care for animals is extremism. I have to say, it backfired spectacularly. We've never had so much support, so much donations, with the meat-eating public actually coming on board to Viva side. So thank you, dispatches, very much. I wasn't going to forget the Hogwood pigs, and neither were our supporters. We had to try to go back, but we knew it was going to be exceptionally difficult. I also knew we had to do more than go in late at night, film and get out. We actually, this time, had to leave hidden cameras. And that's what we managed to do for one week. Bear in mind, this means repeatedly going back on site because you have to take the footage out and put a new card in. And each time you go in, 
there has to be absolutely no evidence that you've been on site. So it's a tremendously difficult job against all their security. It also means the investigators are going through the fear each time of being caught and of course the pressure on them. They're desperate that something obviously doesn't go wrong. But we did it and what we filmed broke my heart. The sick and dying pigs still being dumped in the gangways, terrified, ruthlessly treated, kicked out of the way by farm workers, struck with metal crops and with hand tools. In the artificial insemination shed, a female was moved out of a rape rack by being jabbed in the face, forcing her to move. Where we found live cannibalism last year, we filmed a completely traumatized pig enduring an extended attack. We know that she was in there for at least 24 hours um, because of when the hidden cameras were put in. She was bitten and bullied by the others locked up with her, unable to escape, leaving her body covered in excruciating wounds. This type of attack in pig farms is yet another manifestation of desperation and very poor welfare. What our three investigations spanning those two years show is that Hogwood pigs, they were still in pain, leaving me horrified. But victory at last. Persever perseverance paid off. We planned a third day of action. It was going to be in September. We publicised it and we organised an exclusive in the Mail on Sunday. Tesco watched that footage and were contacted, they were contacted by the national paper and then they dropped Hogwood Farm. Red Tractor suspended certification in response also to the um, hidden camera footage. This news is huge victory. I can't express how much this decision means for us, our amazing supporters, people like yourselves and of course the pigs. Since our first investigation, the farm owners have spent £50,000 increasing security at Hogwood. Rather than use that money to transition to vegan farming, they invested it in making it more difficult for the public to see the truth. But we persevered and the final investigation showed all assurances by giant retailers and industry bodies are false. Hogwood is an abysmal hellhole where cruelty is endemic, but sadly it represents British factory farming today. And although I congratulate Tesco and Red Tractor on finally making the right decision, I cannot help but question why it is routinely left to vegan campaigning groups like Viva to expose the abuse taking place on farms, and why it took those three investigations over the two years for Tesco to act. You're probably wondering the same. Many of you asked me that question when you saw the first footage in 2017. How the hell can Tesco excuse still taking meat from this place? Well, I was told off the record, and this is off the record, so I cannot vouch for its absolute accuracy. This is just what I was told. Tesco didn't respond because they knew all pig farming in Britain is of a particularly low standard. They said, if Hogwood goes, what's going to replace them? It's going to be a farm that's just as bad. Viva will investigate again, we'll be embarrassed again, and we'll have to drop the farm again. To right, Tesco, you got that one right. So they didn't want us to set a precedent. And that is why when you film just routine abuse, neglect and cruelty, it's exceptionally hard to get a supermarket to drop that farm. When they tend to drop it, you'll notice, is when you get direct human brutality. And it's at that point that they tend to um, disassociate themselves with that particular farm. So what they did through those two years is use Red Tractor as their excuse 
for continuing stocking Hogwood because what they kept saying was, well, Red Tractor approved them and Red Tractor are this industry assurance scheme, therefore we will keep on stocking them. So, who is this Red Tractor? It's predominantly owned by unions such as the National Farmers Union and Dairy UK. Red Tractor's chair, Baroness Lucy Neville Rolfe, spent more than 15 years working, guess where? Tesco. She was on the Tesco Board of Directors from 2006 to 2013. Heard about that revolving door syndrome. In 2018, it was reported that only one in 1,000 red tractor inspections are unannounced. One in 1,000. Giving farmers time to hide welfare breaches. And remember, red tractor are on the farmer's side anyway. They're part and parcel of the same industry. Red Tractor have now said that they've made changes to make the scheme more vigilant. However, the so-called unannounced inspections that they're going to um, do only happen after announced inspections show failure to comply. So the likelihood of that making any difference is pretty much zero. Interestingly, not all supermarkets support Red Tractor, and I have to say, the organisation that spoke out most strongly against them, to my knowledge, is Sainsbury's. So their C then CEO in 2014 actually said, why would Sainsbury's wish to lend credibility to a label that frankly anybody can stick on front of their packaging? These kind of industry-wide initiatives are the refuge of scoundrels. Pretty strong words for a giant retailer to say that about an industry assurance scheme. Our Hogwood expose helped the public time and time again to see that Red Tractor cannot be trusted and is a shameful marketing scam. They are just the proponents of factory farming. So what about the government then? Times used to be when we, the public, trusted our government. <laughs> we trusted them to protect farmed animals. Surely the law would stop cruelty? And if one or two aberrant farms are exposed, then the government would prosecute, wouldn't they? Viva has proven to the public again and again over the last 25 years that the government knows precisely what factory farming means for the animals, our planet and our health. They know full well that factory farming is reliant on antibiotic usage and you know that we are running out of antibiotics due to multi-resistant strains of bacteria developing. The government knows that there is case after case of manure pouring into waterways, killing pretty much all life in the vicinity. They also know that farms that repeatedly flout the rules view the fines they receive just as part of routine running costs. The government is absolutely complicit in supporting a system that is based on outrageous cruelty and the pillaging of our planet. Factory farming is disgusting. It is also big business. So to the prosecutions, do the government prosecute? And what happens if those prosecutions are taken to court? There are literally a handful of prosecutions in a year. It is pathetic. And those that go to court, the penalties are pathetically weak. And this is the question we get asked from the public all the time when we show them footage. Surely to God, what you're showing me is illegal. The vast majority of the time, it is not. Often they're breaching a welfare code. Often the RSPCA will not prosecute because the law is so weak. I'll just give you one example. You can Google this and look this up for yourself. This year, a sheep farmer in Lampeter was prosecuted for cruelty. 47 sheep were found dead on his land. One was found unconscious with her intestines spewing out of her body. The prosecution was successful, but the penalty so minor. 
he got 250 hours of unpaid work. He was ordered to pay £1,648 in costs and he was not banned from keeping animals. What's more, the government are complicit in supporting factory farming, and I mean directly with subsidies. So in 2016 and 17, tens of millions of pounds, coming close to 100 million, were given to companies like feedlot style beef units, rearing thousands of cattle in zero grazing conditions on yards, so called mega dairies with herds of up to 1,800 cows were subsidised. Intensive egg producers using cages were subsidised from your taxpayers' money. Poultry mega farms and pig units keeping thousands of animals permanently indoors were subsidised. Livestock units that have been found guilty of pollution and animal health breaches were subsidised. This is the British government. They know exactly what they're doing. Now vets. It's perhaps most disappointing of all that vets who service factory farms are complicit in cruelty. It is telling that vets who try to speak out are silenced. They're asked to comply or else it's likely they're out. We have one brave person, in fact, sat here in this audience today. You saw her in that film. She's an experienced pig vet, and she's come out of that industry, and she has gone vegan, and she will be working with Viva to expose the truth. So well done, Alice. You see, I believe all human beings are capable of change, every single one of us. And one of the positive sides of Viva over the last 25 years, I've talked to the most unlikely people who have gone vegan. And it is incredible, never, ever give up hope on anybody. Vets in the UK take an oath that states, above all, my constant endeavor will be to ensure the health and welfare of animals committed to my care. And so I'd say no vet who sees the conditions of pigs like those at Hogwood are fulfilling that basic promise or duty of care. But agricultural vets are paid by the farmer and massive factory farms are huge profitable clients. And he who pays the piper calls the tune. So we live in a time when the establishment seems dead set on our destruction. Factory farming is a nightmare for the animals. It is a major cause of drug resistance and is wholly unsustainable for our planet. Everywhere Viva points the camera on Britain's factory farms, we find misery, desolation, gloom, deprivation and pain. Yet 90% of Britain's pigs and well over 90% of Britain's chickens, turkeys and ducks are intensively farmed and sadly this industrialization is growing. Worse, it is intensifying further. We have this strange situation, it seems on the surface contradictory but it's not. Veganism is exploding but at the same time intensive farming is becoming more intensive. Think about it, it shouldn't surprise you because the industry has spent decades trying to squeeze every last penny out of each animal's life. The whole way of thinking and development is to intensify further, to get animals to slaughter faster, to breed super cows who produce more milk when they're already on their knees from overproduction. And 300 eggs a year from a hen is just not enough for them. Genetic companies are pushing for 500. Tesco made the right decision to drop Hogwood, but I believe it was because they were embarrassed into doing so, not out of concern for the pigs. Giant retailers, government, vets, trading standards, they're complicit in animal suffering 
and environmental destruction on a gigantic scale. So what's the answer? The answer is to go vegan and encourage others to follow suit. Whenever or wherever animals are used to make money, you will find cruelty, you will find neglect. We have to evolve as a species ourselves to stop seeing them as things with which we can control. So let's stop using animals as ours to exploit. The footage from Hogwood has reached the hearts of millions of people. We have to fight. We have to campaign. We have to continue investigating. It's vital that you support charities like Viva constantly working for change. We sow those seeds of change. It persuades people the answer is within their own hands. It persuades people that you cannot rely on anybody else. They have to change themselves. They have to choose vegan. Our Hogwood Expose helped the public see Red Tractor for the marketing scam that it is. They now know major retailers completely condone animal cruelty. They're not trustworthy. They're the main suppliers, after all, of factory farmed meat. Every member of the public we showed that 3D footage to, I mentioned before, were horrified. Men and women crying. Out and out meat eaters who'd never thought about this before. Most thought that cruelty like this simply could not happen in the UK. Now they know it does. They know it's standard and that the law is weak, that nothing protects these animals except you and your beliefs and your campaigning and your constant vigilance in trying to protect these animals and our animals and to spread the word. The campaign is a massive victory for animal rights it's a display of unity, it's a display of strength, and it's the last result the industry wanted. Against all the propaganda, the attempts by major industry to keep us all eating animals, the tide is turning. We now have a revolution that is gaining force by the second. And that's why we're making this documentary, Hogwood, a modern horror story, to show the public what the meat industry does not want them to see. We want to get it on major platforms and help Britain turn that corner in attitude, making it socially unacceptable to treat animals this way. Remember, factory farming has always been hidden away. It's not something the meat industry exactly want to shout about. However, social media has enabled Viva and other groups and caring souls like you, to show the everyday atrocities that animals endure, and many people are now voting with their wallet. Another major reason that veganism is exploding in popularity is the need for us to change is becoming ever more urgent. Our planet is in big, big trouble as the natural world is trashed. And then there's our health. We're told that we need to eat meat and dairy to be healthy. Then we discover it causes heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and one-fifth of all cancers. The last major survey on veganism showed that 2.2 million people call themselves vegan and over 7 million vegetarian. On top of that, at least a fifth of the population labelled themselves as flexitarian or active meat reducers. That's 20 million people demanding change. No wonder one quarter of the milk range in major supermarkets is now non-dairy. My God, what progress we've seen just in the last two years alone. Food manufacturers, one shy about labelling products as vegan. I can remember re meeting a major supermarket five years ago and they wouldn't put vegan on packaging because they thought it would sell less well. Now it's there in bold, bright words across the front. Practically every major restaurant chain boasts not a vegan token option, but vegan menus. Veganism is rising sharply 
because we're facing up to the fact as a society that changing ourselves is essential to save our dying planet, to stop inexcusable cruelty to animals and protect our health in a society where healthcare provision is being rapidly eroded. Each and every one of us must take responsibility for what we buy and for what we eat. We do have the power to stop the war on animals. The Hogwood victory shows what we can achieve together. And by God, the industry, the establishment, they hate us for it. Veganism means empowering people to be a force for good. It means protecting, respecting animals and our planet. It means celebrating life. Viva life. Thank you.